Is this going to be your first time talking to a Mario Mocha on it our Village be. Inn hotline? First time ever. First time ever. All of our guests always join us on our Village Inn hotline, including uh, the director of athletics for New Mexico State University, Mr. Mario Mocha, for his second interview here on Sports Talk. And hey, good to have you on. And I'm sure you, like a lot of people, excited about the Battle of I-10 uh, this Saturday. Yeah, this is going to be my first Battle of I-10 as I return as a, uh, as a, not a student, as the athletic director. So I am looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where uh, I think everybody should be looking forward to this game. Um, you know, no matter what the records are and all that stuff, it's just uh, everybody in the – uh, in our area, this should be a this should be a big big game. So I hope there's a lot of people that come out and watch it firsthand. Hey, you know I'm curious about something. So people have been calling us up for the last uh, really a couple days now, and they're upset with the program. They're angry. They're tired of not having a consistent winner. We're talking about UTEP, by the way. Absolutely, yeah. and and they're they're very frustrated. They're almost, they almost they they want to see changes made, whether it's at the top down. But fans are just tired of it. Now that's UTEP. Uh, I mean, what about New Mexico State? The Aggies have have been in the similar bowl drought. They haven't really experienced any winning seasons while UTEP has. So I know what I'm dealing with on a daily basis here in El Paso. What are you dealing with as far as uh, trying to to keep the fans uh, excited and, and, and optimistic about the Aggie season? Yeah, well, you know, I, I'll focus on the Aggies, even though, you know, I've met Coach Kugler, and I, I think he's solid. He scares the heck out of me. <laughs> uh, you know, and I, I just think he's an unbelievably solid coach, and I've known Bob Stull for a long, long time. So I respect not only what they've done there, uh, you know, they're coming off a bowl appearance, uh, and they've got some wonderful facilities as well. So, you know, I respect their program a lot, you know, even while we're rivals. You know, I think our challenge here is, is to fight, you know, the Malay. You know, and um, we saw it again. We had a great crowd, 27,000 people. There was a lot of enthusiasm. And, you know, we experienced kind of one of two things. Um, Either, uh, you know, folks saying, oh, man, that was really exciting. We came back. It came down to a field goal attempt at the end. Or, man, it's the same old stuff I've been watching. And, you know, what we've tried to tell people is, hey, you know, this is, while it was a very disappointing loss and while a win would have had a, a tremendous impact, I feel on our community. I still think there's a little buzz out there because the team did play well. It was unbelievably exciting, a lot of offense. And, um, you know, so our, our thing's a little different maybe is just fighting the malaise and trying to get people to say, hey, you know, it's only going to get turned around if you get involved. Um, so that's our challenge. Especially when you have a, a high school football game every year that attracts more fans than, than most Aggie games. And I'm talking about when Mayfield plays Las Cruces High. So you've kind of put it on the field fans and said, hey, it's up to you. They responded, um, I wasn't at the game on Saturday. You tell me, Mario, was there a legit 27,000 there like, uh, like was announced? Yeah, from a ticket sale standpoint, you know, the way we call attendance is kind of actual and bought. So every sold individual game ticket, every sold season ticket number, um, the actual students that were in the crowd, plus our workers number, and that's how we got to set 27,200 or whatever we ended up calling. Um, the actual crowd, the drop count, I haven't seen that, but um, I'll fish it out. But, um, you know, right now with the uh, east side renovation, we hold about 28. But, uh, you know, there was a good solid 22, 23,000 bodies in the stands. But the way we report the attendance, and we've been very consistent in doing that, you know, the number is 27.2. And, and interesting stat, uh, from a revenue standpoint, that was the number 12 game of all time. Wow. But if you uh, subtract every UNM and UTEP game, that was the most money we've ever made from an individual ticket standpoint at a game. It, it just eclipsed the, the game that we played Boise State uh, a few years ago. So it was, it was historically successful at the box office as well. Good for you. <laughs> Good that's, for you guys. That's, that's what it's all about. Mario Mocha with us uh, here on Sports Talk. You know, I think a lot of people here uh, from the El Paso side and UTEP side don't realize that you guys have actually some tremendous players there, Mario, especially with your tailback and Larry Rose the third. Can you tell us about him? Yeah, you know, he's a great kid. He's put on some weight. You know, he's got a smile on his face. You know, um, he was a little bottled up uh, against Georgia uh, State, which was a, a very um, – 
um, surprising for us. You know, we obviously threw for a lot of yards, but you know, hopefully, um, you know, our, he and our O line will bounce back and do a great job. But you know, good kid. We got some offensive weapons. Um, you know, obviously a disappointing loss, uh, but um, yeah, we've we've certainly feel like we have uh, improved uh, from a personnel standpoint. Um, you know, so hopefully, you know, we'll put on a good show on Saturday. You've also lowered tickets. Uh, $12 GAs are now $10. The $15 tickets for the east side are now $10. And the $18 tickets for the west side is now $12. So considering you've pretty much lowered your prices to uh, 12 and 10 bucks, there's going to be even more incentive, I think, for El Pasoans to uh, make the drive over to Cruces to watch uh, what would probably be a pretty competitive game on Saturday. Well, we certainly hope so. You know, and and just what we were talking about, even while reducing the prices to five, ten, and fifteen, when you get a full house, you know, we set records from an attendance standpoint. Now, look, from a season ticket standpoint, you can't cannibalize those tickets all the time because you need to keep the value for the season ticket holders. But the reality is, we do want to attract. We do want to attract our fans, um, and obviously, you know, being creative with the pricing. You know, those prices. Um, you know, with the release we sent out, are really a coupon. If you have a Georgia State coupon uh, ticket in your hand, that acts as a coupon. But you're right, twelve dollars, fifteen dollars uh, um, to get into a, a Division One major college rivalry game is affordable for the whole family. Twelve and under are five dollar tickets. You know, so you can bring the kids. Uh, free parking. Um, you know, so we have. Uh, while this rivalry has been heated in the past, um, you know, because of the of the proximity, you know, I, at least while I'm the AD. I'd like it to be a more of a friendly rivalry. Now we'll be friendly on the field for three hours, <laughs> but um, you know, I, I think we're all looking for um, you know a lot of folks to make that drive on I-10 because you know I'm I'm on here in part to say hey we'd love to have the El Paso fans now look we want to win <laughs> you know we want all of our fans to be here but um, you know in this day and age uh, you know revenue is critically important and uh, we want a full stadium and if it takes the minor fans to to assist in doing that you know um, hopefully all the Aggie fans will uh, hear my heed this call and and turn up in force which I think they will but uh, we do need to fill the stadium and. You know, so we're reaching out to the minor fans and say, hey, it's almost like a home game and the shoe's on the other foot. I was talking to Chris Park, you know, the deputy AD at UTEP, and, you know, when we play over there, uh, we're going to be marketing this as, hey, you know, you know, this is another home game. Just, yep. you know, just drive down the road. It's the battle by 10, baby. That's right. Mm-hmm. Hey, did you ever uh, recover any of the stuff that was uh, taken yes. out of your bus? In, uh, we have Florida? not. You know, I actually got a call from Jeremy Foley, the AD at Florida, uh, yesterday. Uh, I couldn't get a hold of him today. But, you know, we're going through the, uh, we're going through the um, you know, the, all the rigmarole with the bus company and the insurance. And obviously it's a university, so that's some more uh, red tape and steps that we have to do. Uh, but really, you know, so no, we haven't received anything, haven't heard anything from the police but the bummer of the whole thing wasn't so much the laptops and your i uh you know your ipods and your ipads it was more of the personal stuff all the work yeah. Yeah. which you know i'm still you know i work like an octogenarian i still have all these loose papers all over the place that, which can't be recreated um and even something small you know ever since i i signed a deal with the detroit tigers in what 1980 whatever 89 i said that damn keychain for 30 whatever years and yeah. now it's gone so uh-huh. i'd love to have that thing back but you know it is what it is we've uh, tried to it was tough with a big home weekend and all the stuff we were doing to re- recreate all that work but you know i think for the most part we pulled it off successfully good for you and um now it's again getting ready for utep uh, saturday uh, I, I i here's what i've said about this game i, I really believe mario that as far as the uh, you know the direction these two teams are going to go a lot will be determined uh, after saturday if uh, the miners win with incarnate ward at the sun bowl they've got a shot at being two and two heading into conference play if the aggies win especially off of that thrilling loss at, at home to georgia state now all of a sudden you can build on that as you get ready for new mexico and and, and league play in the sun belt there is no doubt that there is a lot riding on this. And, you know, I, so this is a huge game. You know, if I'm on both sides, I still say, hey, we still got a full slate of 
Sun Belt Conference games. You know, if I'm UTEP, I'm going to say, hey, look, we haven't even started our, our conference play yet. So, um, you know, no matter what happens, there's still going to be a tomorrow. But there is no, uh, there is no doubt there's big implications for this game. And uh, that's another reason why I hope people turn out and, uh, and uh, watch it in person. Good stuff. Mario, we appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us and look forward to a meeting with you on Saturday at the ballgame. Hey, game. appreciate it. And uh, just as a little reminder, you know, we're going to honor the memory of uh, Danny Villanueva at the game as well. A uh, long time uh, and great Aggie and, you know, a titan in the broadcast ind- industry with Una Vision and, uh, and Telemundo. So uh, we're going to honor uh, his family and his legacy uh, during the ball game. So hopefully people will, will come out, uh, honor his memory, and enjoy what, uh, the, uh, the program that we have. Good stuff. All right. We'll look forward to it, Mario. Thanks, Mario. Thanks again. Thanks for having us, guys.